G4 NSJ made a video describing how to build a flower pot antenna for the Aviation VHF band. I'll leave a link to his video below. His YouTube channel is called Radio Workshop, so check it out. I decided to build the antenna that he described. Here it is. See G4 NSJ's videos for more about flower pot antennas and how to build them. This video is about my test of this antenna and how it compares to a length of wire thrown over a tree. A flower pot antenna is basically an end-fed half-wave dipole with a choke made from a coax coil for impedance matching. Let's see how well it works as a receive antenna in the real world. But first, we have to see if the antenna is correctly built. For that, we can use a nano VNA as an antenna tester. Nano VNAs are very interesting devices, and if you're interested in radio, you should learn all about them. YouTube has many, many videos, so I won't go into too much detail. The antenna is connected to a nano VNA, which is in turn connected to a computer running this nano VNA saver software that makes it easy to see results on a computer rather than the nano VNA's small screen. And for a receive antenna, really all we can do with this is to see if the antenna is, is having the properties that were intended when I, when I constructed it. And to do that, we have to run a sweep. Um, and I'll change that to be from 100 megahertz to 150, run the sweep. And this VSWR window is the one of greatest interest. And what that shows is that this, this curve has its minimum around 123 or 124 megahertz, which is exactly what I intend. And that tells me that the antenna is correctly constructed and there's nothing badly wrong with it. In terms of the antenna's ability to be good at receiving airband signals, it doesn't tell me very much at all. And that's because these VSWR values really matter a lot more for transmitting than they do for receiving. In fact, they matter a lot for transmitting. What it's really showing is uh, something mathematically equivalent to the fraction of energy that's reflected um, either when you're transmitting towards the antenna or when a signal is trying to go through the antenna or be received by the antenna and delivered to the receiver. And transmitters care a lot more about that than receivers do. And the reason for that is that receivers care mostly about the signal to noise ratio. And the antenna is going to you know, receive both the signal and whatever noise is there around that frequency and deliver that to the receiver. You know, It doesn't necessarily change the signal to noise ratio, although it can help to have a lower SWR if the signal level is too low for the receiver to handle. That's really the only way that it matters. It's mo so again, it's mostly for transmission, uh, but it's, it's nice that it shows that the antenna is constructed the way that I thought it was and is working the way that I intend. So now we can connect it to a radio and see how it does. The radio we'll use is an RSPDX made by a company called SDR Play. This is a very interesting device. You can find videos about it on YouTube as well. But what we really like about it today is that it has inputs for three different antennas. So it's easy to switch from antenna to antenna and compare them and basically see how they work relative to each other. This is the SDR Uno application from SDR Play, the makers of the RSPDX. And so I'm running this on Windows. A few things to know about it. This window here shows the frequency that we're tuning. So it's currently tuning 124.4 megahertz, which is the frequency of the automatic terminal information system from an airport about 13.5 miles away from me. And in the past and with various antennas, I found this signal difficult to receive with excellent clarity. So it's a good test signal for the, for the antenna. The window down here is a frequency spectrum waterfall display, and it shows all of the signals that are available with, within the chunk of bandwidth that the RSPDX is, is currently tuning. So if there were a sec second signal in here, you'd see something. Um, but the signal that we do see is, is the 124.4 megahertz ATIS signal. And very important, notice that the software can measure the signal to noise ratio of the signal, currently reading 22.9 decibels. And uh, receivers care a lot about signal to noise ratio. That's more important to them than things like signal level. And finally, this window here allows me to select between three different antennas, A, B, and C. Antenna A is the flower pot antenna outside. And antenna B is a rabbit ear style antenna stuck on a window not far from me. And antenna C is my current configuration of some wire thrown over a tree also out in the backyard.
And so we can compare the three different antennas and see how well they receive the ATA signal. So to start, I'm going to go off mute and we'll listen to antenna A, the flower pot antenna. Turn up the volume. Simultaneous approaches in use. Notice to air mission. Precision approach path indicator runway 18 left out of service. So, so that was a pretty pretty good signal, and pretty pretty clear and easy to hear. So now let's switch to antenna B, the rabbit ears. So notice that we see that SNR the signal to noise ratio was dropped from around 22 to around 12. And if I turn it up, you can you can tell that the signal is much less easy to understand, uh, much poorer quality. And finally, if I go to the wire strung over the tree, we can kind of tell from the waterfall spectrum display here that there is no signal at all to hear. It's not picking it up at all. If I turn up the volume, you just hear noise. So at least my current configuration of wire strung over the tree is not, not working well for this at all. I do use this antenna for shortwave stations and, and it usually works pretty well, but for this, it doesn't work well at all. If I tune to a different frequency, um, you can hear the airplanes overhead broadcasting and they have a more direct line of sight and this antenna can pick them up, but it's not doing a, it's not receiving the ATA signal at all today. So let's go back to antenna A, the flower pot, and listen to that again. Austin Bergstrom International Airport AI fifth information Bravo 2153 Zulu. Wind 160 at 13. Gusts 23. Visibility 10. So clearly the flower pot antenna is the winner and actually working pretty well and better than any other antenna that I've tried for this application. I'll end the video here. The flower pot antenna design seems pretty promising. I'll have to decide to whether I want to make mine a more permanent installation or not. Once again, see G4NSJ's video on the topic, and be aware you can build these for other frequencies as well. I'll leave you with some audio from 119 megahertz, first from the wire and then from the flower pot. Thanks for watching. Senior three Mike Charlie, contact Houston Center one three four point two. Good day. 134 to the 3-mic call today. Parcher Southwest 2989, 2000, climbing 4000. Southwest 2989, Austin Parcher, contact, turn right, direct, payday, climb and maintain, 1-2000. 1 through 12,000 feet, direct to payday, Southwest 2989. 3-mic Papa, traffic at uh, 3 o'clock and uh, 3 miles southbound, indicating 3,000. Traffic is in sight, no factor for 7 with 3 Mike Papa. 3 Mike Papa, at your discretion, clear direct Gooch Springs, Alpha Golf Juliet. Clear direct Gooch Springs, Alpha Golf Juliet, 7 with Mike Papa. Visual 564, good visual approach runway 17 in San Marcos. They've got several in the uh, pattern. You can contact San Marcos Tower. Good day. Three Mike Papa, additional traffic, uh, let's make it 10 o'clock, 10 to 11 o'clock, 4 miles, north, northeast bound, 5,500 indicated. We'll give it that traffic, some of that, Papa. Hey Mike, I'll have a traffic for you, uh, 1 to 2 o'clock and 5 miles, east, southeast bound, 5,600 indicated.